Hi and welcome to this new video. So it's hard to believe it's been nearly six months since the Intel Raptor Lake issue with elevated bid requests and reports of degradation came to light. In fact, it's around this time when I upgraded to the i9-4900K. After a multitude of BIOS updates, both beta and full, Intel services a final update and the answer to all our gaming prayers. So have Intel finally fixed things with the update 1802? Or will the Intel default settings be as disappointing as the previous versions? It's time to get straight in and find out. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Asus 1802 BIOS update, which is Intel's final solution to the elevated bid voltage requests and also the degradation issues. First thing we need to do, we need to visit the manufacturer's website. We need to choose the appropriate motherboard and we then need to go to the driver and utility and go to the BIOS and firmware section. And we simply need to then click on the download link. We need to select the version 1802 to make sure we're selecting the correct one. That version number may vary depending on your motherboard variation. Once we've downloaded the file, we then need to extract the file, which will be in a zipped folder to a USB stick of suitable size. So I'm using a 32 gigabyte Samsung brand, which has proven reliable to use in the past. Once we have that in our PC, we then boot into BIOS. When you then launch BIOS, go into Tools and the Asus Easy Flash Utility. And you'll see at the bottom here, we've got the 32 gig stick here. And if we select the cap file, which we extracted, if you have BitLocker on your PC, make sure that you're aware of a recovery key before you do this, otherwise it may cause you major problems. Once you then are happy with everything, just review the cap file information, make sure it's the correct version, which we're doing here, and then simply click on yes. Now the BIOS update will then run. You can see that it's a vastly accelerated version here, so it takes around five minutes or so. Uh, once it's completed, you'll see it comes up with a message on screen as shown here. One thing that was new with this version, it also then moves on to a Intel ME firmware screen. And this was stuck on the PC for some time, so just be aware of this. Uh, this is not something that I've seen in the past. Once that's completed, then it will boot into a more familiar screen here. And on this screen, we then simply need to press F1. And once it's to the main BIOS screen, which we're more familiar with here, press F5 to reset to factory defaults. And once we're back to factory defaults, as seen here, we can then move through and we can review the change settings. So first thing we need to go into is advanced mode. And if we scroll across to AI Tweaker, the first thing we're going to do is look at the changes. So you can see we've still got the Intel Extreme profile, which is one that we've been using previously. But the actual Intel default settings, so there are two profiles on there. One is also known as performance. Now this is a lower power value and this sets the ICC max to 307 amps. Now, if you use this, you will get lower performance as the size suggests. Um, however, the extreme profile is the preferred one and it's the one we'll be using moving forward. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to then go in and we need to set our XMP. So I'm setting the desired XMP that I normally use, which is the XMP tweet profile. And the tweet profile simply uses the profile settings from the actual motherboard manufacturer as opposed to the ones defined on the actual RAM itself. Uh, review and save and reset. And once we've loaded into Windows, the first thing we need to do is open Task Manager. We need to check that our XMP is correctly set. So Control Alt Delete and then on to Performance. And then if you review the memory section, you'll see there that uh, the RAM is set correctly. So the first thing we're going to do is going to test the Intel default settings profile. And this is the standard out of the box. Nothing's been changed. The only thing we've done is we've actually just set the XMP profile on the RAM. We're into Cinebench R23. And the reason I like to use Cinebench R23 is quite power intensive and it's a good performance benchmark. So onto one cycle. And you can see we've got a hardware monitor running in the bottom right hand corner there just to show you the temperatures and also the values that are set as standard. So we've got a score of 36519 and the package temperature which is 80 degrees. So during the course of the video, we're also going to use 3D Mark Time Spy at the beginning and end. I find it to be a pretty good benchmark in the respect it's got a very good CPU physics test and also it's quite comparable in terms of gaming testing as well. Now I've been doing some testing using some heavy VR gaming sessions and I'm pleased to say that with the tuning applied, uh, there's no 
degradation in terms of performance and there's no issues in terms of overall temperatures. Uh, one concern I did have with regards to the latest BIOS update was that the ability to remove the C1 E state, in other words, to remove the idle aspects of the CPU, was removed. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that it hasn't had any, any negative effect on the performance overall. So we're coming to the end of the first benchmark. So the overall score was 33,694 and you can see it's good. Now this is the out of the box Intel default score. So what we're now going to do, we're going to move on and we are going to apply the Asus overclock settings tuned. Now it's very much in line with what we've done previously. There's a couple of variations. In other words, we no longer disable C states. We no longer disable a couple of aspects. So there have been a couple of changes I've made to this and as stated, I have tested thoroughly. So the first we need to do is we need to press F5 to reset to default. We then need to go to the advanced mode, which we then press F7 to enter. We then need to go to the Intel default settings. We need to change this to the Asus advanced overclock profile. Ensure you read the disclaimer on there and then we then move down to set our XMP as previously. Once we've selected our XMP, we then move to the Intel Adaptive Boost technology. We are disabling this. We don't want our cores boosting. And then we are then moving down to the Asus Multicore Enhancement. That's let BIOS optimize leaving that as that. And then we then move to the performance core ratio. We then select sync all cores. And then we then select the all core ratio limits, we set 55 to sync all cores to 5500. Moving on to the AI tweaker DigiBRM, we select our word line calibration and we set that to level four. Back into the main AI tweaker page and if we scroll down, we are now looking for the global core SBID. And if we then select adaptive mode, and if we then move down to the offsets mode sign, change that to negative for undervolt and then if we move down to the offset voltage and then we're changing this to at the moment 0 0.0500 and you'll see why in a moment then we need to move on to the uh, AI tweaker internal CPU ma power management and then we select the unlimited ICC max to disabled we change the CPU core cache limits max to 400 we change the long duration power limit to 253 as per Intel default specs. And we move down to the short duration power package limit. We change that to 253 as well as per their specifications. Uh, this is optional really. I prefer to set an IAVR voltage to 1450, which sets the vid max to 1.450. However, this is also now hard written into Intel specifications. Uh, we then need to go on to F9 to search, and if we search under for undervolt protection, you'll see it's already disabled here by default, which I found quite unusual. Uh, if it's not, disable it, and then search virtual for virtualization, and we need to disable Intel virtualization technology. The reason for this is we'll need this to run Intel XTU. It won't run without it. Save changes and reset, and then we are then going to run one benchmark run on Cinebench R23 with the new settings. So the first thing you're going to see is that the temperatures won't be much different. They'll be slightly lower possibly, but the Intel default setting does do a good job of maintaining lower temperatures, which is quite pleasing to see. Now as the first benchmark completes, you'll see this is the first pass on Cinebench R23. Score of 38784, which is a vast improvement over the 36519 that we got with the Intel default settings. So we are well on our way. Using Intel XTU, this is a software application we're going to use to basically find the correct under, undervolt for our needs. And once we've done that, we're then going to hard set that in the BIOS settings, as I'll show you next. First thing we need to do once we've got this running is we need to select advanced tuning. You'll see here we've got our undervolt, which we set in BIOS. In fact, all the settings that are in here will be as per the BIOS settings that we just set previously. Um, the first thing we need to look at is that the relevant settings are disabled where they need to be set. You'll see that the core synchronization is set at 55 here. However, if we move further down, you'll see that it's prompting us to move on to the default settings. We need to change these in here as well to ensure that when we click apply, it doesn't overwrite our core synchronization, which we did in BIOS. So just going through and we're just changing all the cores on the P cores back to 55 as we set in the BIOS just to be sure. So we've got the last two here, just change those to 55. So once we're happy with that, we can have a scan through. We aren't going to change anything on the e cores. going to keep those the same. You'll see that the global offset voltage also applies to the e core ratio as well. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to dial out another 0 0.05 on the undervolt. The areas that are greyed out, by the way, are the changes that we had made within the BIOS, and that's why we're greyed out in this section here as well. Once we're happy with that, we click on Apply, and we're then going to run a stress test, and we're going to run the stress test using the Advanced Vector Extensions 2. Uh, basically we're going to run this for five minutes once again I'm not going to make it sure for five minutes we're just going to vastly accelerate through it uh, as you'll see here so running on to the end of the test the last few seconds remaining here and you can see that the CPU current throttled and the CPU power throttled and that's due to the fact that we have set a hard limit of 400 amps uh, we've removed the ICC max ability to go any higher and also 253 as per the Intel default settings what we're looking for is a pass so once we see the green pass we're good to go so this is a process we will use to determine the best undervolt for our system. So once again, once we've set it in XTU, we run a Cinebench R23 test and we would run hardware monitor so we can monitor the temperatures at the same time as well. Uh, once this completes, you'll then generate a score and I would recommend that you note each score every time you make a pass and you make a note of the temperatures as well. So on this score, we've achieved a overall score of just over 38,000 again. Back into Intel XTU, so this time around we're going to dial out another 0 0.005. We're then going to benchmark again and we are going to monitor the temperatures and we're going to look for performance increases. Now once we reach a point where we're happy with our overall performance and temperatures and it passes the AVX2 test, we can then run additional benchmarks to ensure that it's working well for our system. So you can see here, we're just adjusting the voltage again. Once we're happy with that, we then click on apply. Uh, we can then move on to yet another stress test. So we're selecting the Advanced Vector Extensions 2 test, and you can see instantly its CPU is current throttled and CPU power throttles. And we're looking on the right-hand side at the package temperatures, and we're also looking at the package temperatures on the left-hand side, which is just above the CPU utilization. Now, this isn't a real-world test, so obviously this is pushing the CPU to its maximum. It's working at 100%. You can run it for longer than five minutes if you wish. However, five minutes is sufficient to show if there are any issues. Now, you may remember in the previous videos we've disabled current excursion protection. I don't feel this is necessary after testing with this uh, new BIOS update. Um, in terms of undervolting, it seems to be handling it quite well. And undervolt was actually disabled by default. I haven't experienced any issues or any blue screens with it as of yet. So you can see that the CPU stress test has passed once again. And once again, once it has, we'll then move on to another Cinebench R23 test. Now, don't be surprised if you see a drop in performance with various different voltage changes. Now, what we're looking for is a undervolt with an increase in performance and a benefit in temperature reduction. And occasionally during the course of this, you may see that there is a undervolt change that you make, which may impact slightly on the performance of a CPU. So once again, you can see that the performance is increasing and you can see that the package temperatures are reducing. Now we've made another change. So this is a change to 0 0.065 and we are then going to run another Cinebench R23 test. Now, it comes to a point where it can be quite tempting to carry on undervolting and you may see increases in performance, but you're going to reach a point where the system becomes unstable. Obviously, it requires a certain amount of power to operate efficiently, so don't be tempted to push it too far. Obviously, just find what is right for your system. Bear in mind these CPUs were hitting 100 degrees on the previous default settings. Now, I'm at 39.435 now with the overall package temperature of 78 degrees. At this point, what we're now going to do is we're now going to run a further benchmark test. So this gaming benchmark test, once again, using 3D Mac Time Spy. And I've also tuned the actual GPU to match the settings based on the CPU. And how I've done that is I've used the NVIDIA app and I've just basically run the auto tune function on there to match the updated CPU settings. And if you are using an NVIDIA GPU and you do want to see more on that, I'll leave a link to the video at the end of the description and shows you exactly how to do that. So we're now on to the second graphics test in TimeSpy. So once again, the real world test for you will be uh, find the correct undervolt, find something that's suitable for your system. So once you're happy with the temperatures and you're happy that there's been a significant performance increase, don't push it too far at that point. You can then run some benchmarks. I would certainly recommend the 3D Mac Time Spy test as one to use. Um, there are other ones obviously available on the 3D Mac suite of testing software. Uh, but this one, once again, has a good physics test, which is certainly good for measuring CPU performance. We would look to expect a score of above 26,000. 
And what we're looking for in game is obviously a smooth experience with no stuttering and no delays or no freezing. And certainly above 26,000 will deliver exceptional gaming performance for you. So into the final physics test here and then on to the final results. So you can see it's an excellent score, 35163. The CPU score is 26646, so pretty much the best you can get. And then across the scale at the top, you can see that the CPU clock frequency is completely flat. So no stutters, no drops in performance, complete consistency, which is what we want. On to then applying the settings within BIOS. And it's as simple at this point, once we've found the correct undervolt level that we want, to then simply go back into the BIOS screen, press F2 or delete to enter there. And this is a benefit of using Intel XTU. If we didn't use XTU, we'd be having to bounce back in and out of here consistently. So basically move on to AI Tweaker by pressing F7. And then we are scrolling right down to where we were previously onto the offset voltage. And we can then change this to our final desired value. So in this example, I'm using 0 0.065 which is the final setting that we found was best for our system. Once you're happy with that, and once you have changed that, you simply then move over to exit, save changes and reset, your system will reboot, and you can see here this is the final offset voltage that we've chosen. So this is my PC specification, as you can see here, just using the standard AIO cooler, which is a 360 Corsair AIO. So nothing special, no custom loop or anything like that, just something that most users will have. And the temperatures and performance has been absolutely fantastic. And I've been using these settings now for some time. I've had some great comments with many other users as well. So it's nice to see that it's obviously helping you guys as well. Now, as the final benchmark was running, I had hardware monitor running on a different monitor in the background and also screen capture of that as well. Uh, the screen capture also impacts on performance as well, so the actual figures probably would be much higher for you. Remember to close any background processes when you are benchmarking as well, because it obviously would impact on the actual final figure. So as you can see here, the ignore the right-hand side maximum temperature, the 3D Mark application always hits that as soon as you open it, but the overall package temperatures were absolutely fantastic and very, very low throughout the course of the actual benchmark. So thank you once again for watching. And there are some links here to other videos which I'm sure you will find interesting. As always, a huge thank you to all channel supporters. And if this video has helped you, it would be massively appreciated if you could leave a like, subscribe and share. Until next time, take care. I'll see you again soon.